Hello and welcome everybody to today's video. There is a massive news coming in that Arjun Erigesi has reached a live rating of 2792 and is very close to the 2800 threshold. And how did this happen? He is playing the Chess Olympia 2024 in Budapest from Team India and has scored a perfect 6 out of 6 score. Today is a rest day and hence I am here to show you the last game that he played against Sujerov Sanan, a very talented grandmaster from Hungary. Here on the board Arjun is with the black pieces and let's start the game. Ok so e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5 and a6. This is the very popular Royal Lopez variation where we go bishop a4, knight f6, castles d6 and here white played the move rook to e1. Now there is also another possibility of directly striking in the center with playing d4, pawn to d4 but this is a not a very good move. The problem is right now our knight is pinned. So firstly we will kick the bishop behind, we will play b5. The bishop goes to b3 and then we will chop off the pawn with the knight because we want to exchange the knight for a very important reason. Knight takes, pawn takes and queen takes. Now you will tell here why is black winning? It's black to play and you have to find the best move here. Yes, the move is none other than c5 and wherever the queen goes, let's say queen goes to d1 behind, then c4 and the bishop here is trapped. So then here white could not have taken the pawn here and black was simply a pawn up. And not only that you will tell it's a double pawn, but pawn is a pawn. And then here the engine suggests something like a4 and then go rook b8. But yes, black is slightly better. So moving behind here, therefore d4 break is not very good right away. So white prepared it with playing rook e1 first. Then bishop d7. Now he played c3. c3 you can see the clear idea. First idea is to play d4, support it with another pawn. And the second idea is to make room for the bishop to go back to c2 if it is necessary in the future. g6. Here you see Arjun saw that the bishop here is not very good because the pawn might be blocking it. And hence he thought to open the bishop from this side. Because he is thinking that of course white is going to strike in the center, correct? And the center is going to get solidified. It's going to get open. Then what are the best pieces in an open position? The bishop. And hence he thought to fiancé to his bishop to g7. d4, bishop g7. There is no hurry to take this pawn and give white the center. h3, castle. Simply now all the development is over. White has some development left. But okay, we will see the drawback of white not developing his pieces and playing something like h3. The point of h3, if you will ask me here in this position, yes, here. The point of h3 is firstly to prevent something like a bishop g4 and pinning the knight and then attacking the center somehow and utilizing the pin. And second thing is when you want to develop your bishop to the e3 square, every time the knight pounces in and then attacks the bishop here and then trades this off. Therefore, you play h3. In the Sicilian defense also, which I play the most, we play f3. So, the idea is the same, just to prevent knight coming here or the bishop coming here. We see castle, knight bd2. The point is just simple, the knight can't develop here, to, so it's developing here and some threats of c5 and something like that. Then e takes d4, c takes d4, knight to b4. And this was a very classy move, I think, because knight b4 started the positional play in the entire game. What does knight d4 do? First, knight b4, my bad. Firstly, it has a direct threat of putting knight to d3 and also the bishop is now open, so that both the bishops are seeing each other. Secondly, it is just provoking white to ruin its structure. So here, white firstly takes queen takes and then plays the move queen to b3. We won't retreat our knight because now you can see knight d3 is not possible but we won't retreat our knight and just play a5 and provoke white to play the move a3. Now you will tell why is a3 bad. So I will not tell a3 is bad or something because that's the best move of the position until now both the players are playing the best moves. Correct. But 
in a human perspective human game perspective playing moves like the pawn moves in the middle game it gives some kind of weaknesses in the position like you can see you can see here a3 weakens the light squares in the position of course white has seen that the light square bishop has been exchanged but the knights are also sometimes very good so here firstly knight is attacked will go behind then he also attacks another time by pushing the spot this is also the best move but you can see some weaknesses in the opponent's camp has been created so these all squares serve as weaknesses in the opponent's camp right now knight goes behind to b8 this is a very nice move because people might be tempted to go here or sit in the center but arjun had a very clear plan when he saw here a3 he saw that these squares are getting weak correct i want my knight there so he just continued with the knight coming here and knight b8 and his plan is to put the knight here to here and in the future push this and put it here or control the d3 square so here white takes the pawn so white currently is a pawn up knight goes to a6 queen retreats behind because you can see something like this might be bad for white white felt like that here the best move was queen to c6 and exchange the queens and get a very strong c6 pawn here and that would blockade this pawn but of course uh, queen coming back is also the second best move queen b3 and we see a knight to c5 now you will see the positional weaknesses which white had created black is utilizing it the knight is jumping from one square to the other so knight to c5 comes in with a tempo attacking the queen the queen moves to c4 and now our queen jumps in why why this queen exchange is critical because black has seen that in the end game positions matter one pawn moves also matter so here you can see black has done everything what it wants in the end game it has created all the weaknesses that it wanted in the white's camp and now just to take advantage of it black is trying to exchange the queens so after the next move e5 that was the turning point because that is not a good move you can see the bar leveling up and now because here black achieved its motive it traded the queens and not only that the center is getting solidified and when the center gets not solidified simplified and when the center gets simplified and it is an open center now you see the worth of this bishop this bishop is like the sicilian dragon bishop where it sees the end entire diagonal and there are things going to happen in this diagonal so knight comes knight takes his pawn and according to the material it's equal also one thing to note is this game was entirely also based on the time and the mental thinking of the players because you might see arjun out of a 1 hour 30 minutes game still has 1 hour 13 minutes and his opponent is down to 26 minutes and not only this if you see somewhere behind on the 15th move let's say here arjun had 1 hour 31 minutes that is insane because we started 1 hour 30 minutes yes so continuing here when everything got exchanged we take this pawn white played the move rook to b1 rook to d1 my bad the knight is attacked and simply black retreats its knight behind now what is it doing that firstly these two knights are not weak but they are supporting each other so they are little shaky because one knight moves the other knight will be in threat because this knight is also attacked by the bishop also the bishop also exerts the pawn and hence stops the bishop from developing itself but the bishop comes out it's like okay i'll save this this pawn is defended by the knight i'll counter attack so the knight is counter attacked the knight goes simply to a4 and attacks the b a b2 pawn once again bishop simply comes here so now you can see sanan here thought for like 21 minutes he's down to 3 minutes the move number is 24 16 more moves for the time control to add up but sanan was very solid in the game i must say he put his bishop he's playing the best moves of the game put his bishop on this diagonal so that our bishop seems not so good because these both bishop get exchanged then it's all over here black came with rook to d8 bishop takes knight now sanan had to play fast he 
took two minutes though took the bishop uh, took the knight bishop takes knight pawn takes it's important because we don't want to ruin our structure by giving isolated pawns pawn takes and then knight comes inside with two minutes on his clock there is a 30 second increment therefore the time is increasing so the knight comes in to d7 now we can clearly see that what black white is telling that you take my pawn i'll take your pawn and when both all the pawns on the queen side get exchanged then it will be a drawish end game because pawns on one side knights are very good and both the players have knights so here firstly the uh, rook was attacked here correct so the rook is defended by playing rook to e8 knight takes pawn knight takes knight takes and bishop takes so now one of the pawn has been simplified firstly white thought here to simplify it better because white if you see the time control white has 12 more moves to play he has two more minutes and hence he thought why play something like this and just give up the rook and then this pawn will be hanging yeah so for this exact same reason white first exchanged the rooks rook takes and then played the calm move rook to a2 because it also defends the rook as well as puts uh, protection on the pawn now seeing the time white has 10 more minutes uh, 10 more moves to play two minutes black still has 53 minutes so arjun's idea was to put time pressure and as for as soon as he can end this game and give his team support that one game has ended one game he has won and he has that point but sanan was very very solid here after a check king h2 bishop comes here it is a double attack on the pawn as well as the knight but you can see the rook on a2 does a magnificent job defending both the pawns at the same time so here knight c4 another defense on the pawn as well as you're attacking this pawn again a4 this a4 move was very crucial firstly you can defend this pawn again with the bishop but then opponent can play a4 and why does that uh, worry you this is because the opponent's pawn is right now on the dark square so you can attack it with your bishop in the later run but if you play something like this and he goes a4 of course tactic tactically i haven't counted it i'm just telling it positionally then this pawn is on the light square and attacking it would be a challenge for you in the future and hence black started with the move pawn to a4 g3 here white was just blitzing out moves because you can see he just thought for 20 minutes and he has 38 seconds on his clock that means he had eight seconds when he made this move bishop c5 keeping eye on both the pawns rook c2 this is a nice move because the knight here can move away somewhere and put pressure on all the pieces at the same time so taking the knights uh, rook c2 in the into the consideration here the best move black had to play was rook to c1 as per the engine as well so never mind bishop goes to c5 rook c2 here uh, the rook comes uh, to d4 attacking the knight keeping pressure on it and now the king starts marching in king goes to g2 black king also starts it then a rook comes here he's like i don't want black to play something like this and cut off my king from coming out and hence i'll play simple rook c3 also defending my pawn because the knight is in under some pressure and also bringing my king inside black king also comes inside the knight comes out putting pressure on the pawn as well as a discovered attack on the bishop Rook d5, both tasks done at the same time, defended as well as counter attack. Knight goes behind. There are two attackers on the bishop. Bishop simply moves to b6 because the king is here, correct? So we also have to put up pressure on the f2 square because if king starts running outside, the f2 square will become weak, correct? So king comes out. The rook goes to b5 and his idea is simple, is to play rook to b3, exchange the rooks and then go in with this pawn because our pawn is very very advanced right now now you can see is the 39th move one move is remaining arjun uh, sanan played the 39th move here and uh, sanan played the 40th move here that is king e2 and now he's relieved because he has more 30 minutes on his clock here you might not be able to see it but yes both the players have extra time 
in this clock and here on the 40th move Arjun played the move rook to b3. Of course, Sanan is not going to exchange these rooks but even though he got extra time on his clock, I think he got a little relaxed or a little more nervous that he played an inaccuracy after like playing best moves for the 40 moves, start 40 moves of the game. He played knight b4 and now the entire game has changed. This is simply because knight b4, first idea is you think that why is the rook for free. But rook is not free, of course, he is a grandmaster. He has calculated that after rook takes, knight check, king d6, knight takes this, bishop comes here, take and take. Everything has been simplified. 3 versus 3 pawns, bishop versus knight. Of course, knights are better in positions where the pawns are on one side. But in this case, it is a drawish endgame, theoretical draw. And hence, of course, Arjun did not take the rook. But what Sanan missed is the calm move that Arjun played, uh, the king to d7. A very, very calm move. Because now, if you'll see, the next move is to exchange the rook, correct? And after rook check, this is another inaccuracy because directly now black exchange and this is the end game where the pawns are on both sides. Black has a bishop. A bishop is worthy and more worthy than a knight in an end game where the pawns are on both the sides. Because you can see the movement of this bishop is very nice. It can come here, attack this side. When it wants, it can just jump here and attack this side. Whereas the knight, if the knight is sitting here, it wants to go to the other side. It has to take one, two, three moves, correct? And that's why bishops are superior in the end games for pawns on the both sides. King c6, king d2. Both the players are planning to bring the king towards the pawns here so as to put some pressure on the opponent. Bishop d4, a nice move because this restricts the king from entering. Pawn comes here. White was like, I don't want to keep my king, uh, keep my knight tied up on the defense of this pawn. So I'll just play simply f3. Our king comes in and the threat is to go inside now and just pounce into the b3 square, take this pawn and just win the game. So white had to play uh, king to c2. And here simply now, black is using the concept of zugzwang. Black is like, I can move my bishop like this. My, like black can keep moving his bishop and wasting moves. Whereas one knight move is, a, you can say, a nightmare for white scam. Because then the king can start pouncing in or the king can switch sides and go to the other side. So black is just waiting for now. Pawn push and now simply another waiting move. Here one move that is king to d4 was very nice because it's going here also and keeping an eye here also. But Arjun played... Bishop to f6, that's also the best move. King comes here. As soon as the king leaves the square and goes here, black strikes in and goes in with the king. White returns back, takes the opposition. And then Arjun is like, I'll play h5. And stop development of your pawns. And once white gets less on moves, that's when black will shine. So here pawn push, takes, takes and takes. Black just gave up one pawn, white just gave up one pawn because black can, uh, uh, white can see that here we have a check and there's a fork and white is winning the pawn again. But you can see the bar is getting crazy. This is because when the knight takes, you can see the knight is now not getting out. The bishop comes here first. You can see the knight had these two squares to escape, correct? This square is taken by the king. So the bishop comes here, takes hold of these squares. These two squares. Also, this square is taken hold by the bishop. The knight can't go here also because the bishop is taking its square. And it's kind of trapped. The king comes here. The king goes inside. The knight comes here. And finally, after playing bishop to g5, the knight has been successfully trapped. And thus, Sanan played the move knight to f5, giving up the knight for the pawn. Here, if he had played knight to g8, then simply bishop to c1 also is a nice move because now... You don't trap the knight. You don't take the knight and just take this pawn. And when the king starts coming in, then you just go and take this pawn also. So there are many ways to continue. Moving behind here, he gave up the knight because it was trapped. 
takes, takes, and here. The last move that Sanan played is tricky because if the king takes this, then it's a draw. Because now our, his king can come here and chop off this pawn, and you cannot checkmate with a lone bishop. So the king was, a king told the bishop, you handle this pawn, and I'll go and handle the white king. And so black can simply come and defend this pawn, and then use the Zugzwang concept, because white does not have any moves. Black can simply play waiting moves and once the king moves somewhere, then black can get the entry and then black can win. One move is to go from this side and then the king has to go here like this. You see the concept of one pawn versus one pawn endgame. That same concept will be logical here because we'll just simply put our bishop here and win the game. So yes, this was a very big analysis of 10 minutes. I hope that you like the video. and. Congratulations firstly to Arjun Arigasi for this phenomenal performance on for now till the 6th round. 6 out of 6 is not an easy task and more phenomenal is the rating of 2792. I hope today the rest day he'll take a lot of rest and come back strong tomorrow stronger than this and he crushes his opponent and reaches 2800 very soon. I hope you like this video. I'll meet you in the next video. Till then, stay safe, play chess, keep learning, bye bye. Do not forget to like the video. Do not forget to like the video as well. Yeah, bye.